Hi folks, welcome to my YouTube channel. So in this video, we will discuss about the complete hydrodeform mode. As we have earlier discussed about the partial hydrodeform mode, so let's discuss about the complete hydrodeform mode and make some contrast points versus partial hydrodeform mode. So in this uh, picture, the first picture represents the complete hydrodeform mold. So here we can see that the all the endometrium of the uterus is filled with the edematous villi and there is no any normal component of the fetal tissue. So here we can say that in, in the complete hydrodeform mold, there is an no fetal tissue, which we will discuss in the pathophysiology and in the microscopically as well. So discussing about the definition of the complete hydrodeform mold, literally the meaning of hydrodeform is that just the edematous are very large hydropic villi. So as the name indicates that complete hydrodeform mold, it implies that there is all large hydropic villi. There is, there is going to be no fetal or any maternal component. So it is one of the gestational trophoblastic disease, which is characterized by diffuse hydropic enlargement and trophoblastic proliferation of the chorionic villi without embryonic development. So here, the trophoblastic proliferation will going to be in a very high circumferential manner, which is in contrast with the partial hydrodeform mole, which we will define when we discuss the histological feature. While the genome in this complete hydrodeform mole is going to be the diploid, which is in contrast with the partial hydrodeform, which was the triploid. While the ultrasonography shows the sinoestrom appearance, which we will discuss further, the, this sinoestrom appearance is just the indicates the these hydropic villi. While as we said that these are the non-neoplastic conditions, but they have some certain percentage that they can convert into the choriocarcinoma or in the invasive mold because the patients who have the choriocarcinoma they commonly have the previous history of a, either a partial or a complete hydrodeform mold. So in terms of risk, it, they carry 15 to 20 percent. While the pathophysiology, in the 80 percent of the cases, what happened that when one spermatozoa fertilized the empty ovum, that ovum that, that has lost the nucleus or that ovum that does not have any chromosome. So when it is fertilized by the spermatozoa, there is an auto reduplication of that spermatozoa and cause the formation of the diploid number of the chromosome. While in the terms of 20%, which is a little bit rare compared to the above one, when the two spermatozoa with the haploid number fertilize the empty or empty ovum and cause the formation of a diploid number of chromosome. While in the 80% of the cases, this theory is applicable and is we can see that the ovum is completely empty. So as there is no chromosome, so we will, uh, we can expect that there won't be any fetal or any maternal component. While discussing about the clinical features, these patients with the complete mole commonly present in the first trimester, which is really contrast with the partial mole. In the partial mole, sometimes patient can go behind the first or the second trimester, but in terms of complete mole, it is commonly present in the first trimester. And these complete mole, because of their highly prof proliferation of the trophoblastic tissue, they cause the rise in the SCG levels, and SCGs can mimic with the thyroid hormones and the other hormones. So there will be the burst of the hormones which will act on the ovaries and they can cause the enlargement of the ovaries and ultimately they can cause the formation of ovarian theca lutein cyst, which is uncommon or rare in the partial mode. While in this, because the villi are continuously increasing and they they are edematous, they are increasing in the size. So they will also cause the uterus to increase significantly or in the other terms, 
we can say that it is more than or above the deaths, which is unusual in terms of normal or in the terms of partial moles. While as we described earlier, the trophoblastic tissue will have an increased hyperplasia. So when there is an increased hyperplasia, so they have an increased capacity to produce the human coronic gonadotropic levels. So in these patients, the levels of beta SCGs is commonly going to be more than the 100,000 international units. And as the SCG mimics the thyroid and other hormones, so these patients are uh, predisposing to develop the uh, hypertension, hyperparathyroidism, and hyperemesis gravidum as well. So discussing about the ultrasonic uh, features of this complete mole, they commonly give rise to the synostrom appearance, which these villi appears like a grape like or the ball of the sino. So that's why they call it the synostrom appearance. These are the hydropic villi. While discussing about the grass feature, so the first point is that there won't be any fetal or any maternal or any placental tissue because the spermatozoa fertilize the empty ovum. So here in this grossly, we can all see that these are the 10 white, large hydropic villi. There is no background of a normal placenta or any fetal or any maternal component. So this all represents these hydropic large villi. Let's discuss the microscopy. So on this low power, we can clearly appreciate that there are very large villi which has the cisterna or the uh, which have a very large cisterna in the center and these are very large we can also see uh, along with that a lot of other villi which are very large and edimators this is the one reason why the uterus is going to be larger than the deaths so let's go on the high microscope so on this high power we can completely see that there is an uh, abnormal edimatous large villi which is surrounded by the very hyperplastic trophoblastic tissue and it, it is completely circumferentially covered it and as we said because of this hyperplasia of the trophoblastic tissue there will be the very high level of the beta scgs as well and if we can go much more high power on this we can see that some of the trophoblastic tissue will have some prominent nucleoli and there will be the pileomorphism of the cells, pileomorphism which indicates like variations in the size and the shapes. So because of this atypia and the pileomorphism, they carry some certain uh, risk for uh, certain risk to develop the choriocarcinoma. While in terms of staining, is the major stain to differentiate the complete mole versus the partial mole is the p57 because p57 is imprinted in the paternal genes while it is represented by the maternal genes only as the complete mole does not have any maternal component because the ovum is empty so the p57 we expect that it is going to be negative in the villus cytotrophoblast or in the stromal cells while the positive staining for the complete mole is the p53 but the p53 is not the reliable marker completely for the complete mole because in some uh, 20 to 30 percent it can be positive in the partial mole as well so this is the end of my video thank you so much